This episode of All Things Business, the podcast, is brought to you by our digital media partner, DFA Law. DFA Law, providers of expert and dedicated legal advice to businesses and families since 1838. DFA Law, the law firm for life. Fraser. Ben, how are you? I'm good. You? Yes, very well. On the road again. Yeah, I know. Describe where we are. Well, those watching are going to have a bit of an idea. Yeah, I was going to say. For those listening. Those listening. We are in a picturesque Northamptonshire village off the A14, um, surrounded by stone, exposed wood, Far, far too many beers to choose from and, and, and give them number a nine num- yeah i know yeah straight straight in on number nine but yeah we're in um an absolute cracker of a pub in in lowick some yeah. people may know lowick it got particularly famous recently we'll come on to that a bit later we're with another celebrity this time aren't we we are a celebrity of food and drink within <laughs> northamptonshire richard gordon how are you very well, thank you. Yes, uh, and welcome. Welcome to the Snooty Fox. Well, thank you for having us, mate. Yeah, pleasure. Um, so we've we've sort of known each other for a few years through. I was probably through the food and drink the food and drink awards, awards yeah, and seeing you. Into yeah, bump and, into you there yeah. and see you go up and and get an award. And, uh, and well, yeah. we've had a few awards over the years. Been a few. And yes. uh, and more recently turned into a, a sponsor there. Category yes, sponsor. Yeah, we took the decision to uh, be category sponsor and step away. And let other people then take the glory of what we had and what all goes with it because there's a lot to go with it and to winning um and to help some other people through the ranks really i suppose yeah yeah we'll come on to saltburn in a bit <clears throat> because when that all came to um the news so to speak i reached out to you and said could we come and come and see, see the yeah, fox everyone's talking about saltburn, I, right? I know yeah. well i haven't watched it and fraser told me about a, a particular scene <laughs> which I think he enjoyed, and oh, I definitely didn't. Oh, he came to the he graveyard. Came. Well, <laughs> he, oh, well, that was one of my favourite three. <laughs> one of my favourite three. We won't, <laughs> we won't spoil it. But no, I, I, that came with a warning. So I, I said to Ben, like, Ben, you might not want to watch it because it's, um, it is what it is. But it, uh, a lot of people, we get frustrations with this in Northamptonshire that we don't know everything, but we know the corners, the nooks and the crannies, and you've got an amazing pub. Um, that has become, let's let's say, as famous as the film, because you've got people coming to see it. But we'll we'll get onto that because that's that's the, the not the most important reason why we're here. But Ben probably alluded to it. But for people that don't know Greedy Gordon, the group, um, the um, locations, just give us a a whistle stop on on that. How long have you been doing it first? I've been in the industry all my life. So when I twenty left. years. Uh, yeah, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> Near enough 40 now. Um, so, it's been interesting all my life. We started with the Red Lion in 2018. We took the lease on at that. And then we expanded. Um, now we've got the Pig and Waffle in Grafton Underwood. And then came along the Snooty Fox, which is where we are today. And then we've got the newly opened farm shop in Woodford and the cafe, the Buttery Cafe, which sits next to that. So five five different sites, all under the Greedy Gordon umbrella. And there's an online business as well. Uh, yes, we also sell cigars uh, that we post out all across the country. Birthday cards, cigars, sort of birthday gifts, that sort of thing. It's all stemmed out of the pubs and what we've created, really. Um, and yeah, and that's it, uh, in a nutshell, really. That's and you, you started life as a, as a chef, didn't you, straight out of school? Straight out of school, Corby College. 16 years old, three years full-time, sitting guild, 706, one and two, best thing I ever did. Really? Traditional French cookery, I was taught, I still remember it all now. And then went on from there, spent my whole career locally. So you haven't ventured outside of the county as a um, chef? Opened a restaurant in the south of France. Did you? Yeah. Oh, nice. With uh, an old Saints player, Johnny Howard. Johnny Howard? Johnny Howard, yeah. I don't remember him. Worked with him for a couple of years in Bezier. About ten years ago, uh, which was a great experience. experience. Yeah, yeah, that was that was great. And then came back and, uh, and the red line. We took the red line on, and we've not looked back since. And here we are now. We're just about to enter our seventh year. So all things going. It, it's uh, 
it's been a real whirlwind, really. I can imagine. And across the the group, the venues, how many how many staff have you got? So currently on the books at the minute, I think we've got just shy of a hundred, about hundred wow. staff. Wow, that's impressive. Hundred, that's really impressive. Yeah. But um, we, I mean, we touched on this before we started, but I mean, hundred. I mean, that's a big. I know the definition of an SME in this country is five to two hundred forty nine employees, and I've said this many a times. If you've got ten people on your payroll, it's a lot different to having hundred and fifty, right? Yeah, yeah. hundred people. That, that's a, that's a, that's a. In my eyes, that's a very substantial business. There's a lot of people to manage, um, but our duty of care is to our employees. Yeah. Uh, without our team, we would be nothing. Yeah. Literally, and our success is down to our team. Yeah. And the people around us. Um, if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have anything. So, then and what's the what's the what's the key there? Is it obviously the back of them in terms of career progression? Is it the is there a bit of flexibility in terms of letting them have a bit of variety by going venue to venue? Maybe. Yes, um, I think work life balance. We tend to try and offer as much as we can within the hospitality trade. And me growing up in it, there was no work life balance. Mm. You're expected to work Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. In on Monday, very little time off, and you're back to it again. And lots of hours, you don't get paid for any overtime. That was the old school way, wasn't it? But that's not the way we do things. Work-life balance, most of them are on four-day weeks, especially the chefs. Really? Uh, so they get three full days off a week, a weekend day as well. Um, and it, it works. We, think- to retain, <clears throat> we retain a lot of staff. 60%, 70% of our staff have been here three, four years plus. That's what I was just going to say. The staff retention is possibly... Uh, chall- well, extremely challenging in hospitality because there's not as many people going into the industry anymore. Um, but also, I was at something with Northampton College the other day where working in hospitality is a sort of like a, a footstep into your career, whether it's work experience, part time when you're going through your education. The amount of skills that you learn working in hospitality. It's unreal. Customer service, working under pressure, Mm. working to timescales, working as a team. Mm. The fundamentals are here and it's amazing. Well, I I, I got here just after nine. I've come in the tradesman entrance. You've got two two chefs in there. I went past the lobster tank, (laughs) which I I, I was like, wow. (laughs) And they're here at nine o'clock and, you know, I'm guessing that's all prepping for lunch service and stuff. Yeah, prepping for lunch. We've got bookings this lunchtime. There'll be four of them in there at lunchtime. Um, Getting ready for service really every day because everything's homemade. Yeah. We cut the chips, we cut the potatoes, uh, we make as much as we can, you know, so everything's fresh. Uh, so it needs a good team of people to be dedicated to then produce that consistency because I think that's another a big plus for what we do is we're consistent. Yeah. Consistently good. Um, I think I can say that. Yeah, of course yeah, you, you can. can. You can. You, <laughs> 100%, 100% you can say that because... You are consistently good, but you also you believe in it. Yeah, definitely. Hospitality is in my blood. It always has been. Um, and it was always a big thing. of I wanted my own group of pubs. And here we are. <laughs> you know, five years later, here we are. What, what's been the biggest challenge over the last... or le- Win and learn. I think Man- Nelson Mandela said that, didn't he? Yeah, well, what, I, I think... What's no, the biggest, we have lived biggest and learned lesson? massively. Financials, you know, who teaches you how to how to expand and also I didn't realise until today that you took the keys for the Snooty Fox when? 4th of January 2020 oh, such a great year how was your yeah do- it was <laughs> how was your Donald Duck <laughs> well I was I was going to say this before before you came into it that seven years as running the businesses and the venues the last four of those have possibly been the most challenging four years in business for the last yeah. I don't know, go back to the World War, Second World War. That, it's it's the, been the challenging. Tough. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, it has been tough, but we were. We also took another lease on mid-COVID, okay. which everyone thought we were nuts, but it was on our radar. It was one that we wanted, and that was the pig and waffle. So we got the keys for here, and then the pig and waffle, we got the keys a year later in December. This still wasn't open, um, purely because the renovations we need to do here were huge. Um, and then there was a lack of supply, a lack of material, a lack of everything, really. Um, plus, we kept pulling bits off and, they, they, and the bits fell off. And then we had to, <laughs> I was gonna say that, yeah. and then we had to go and find some more money to yeah. to do what we did. You know, we invested near enough into a million here uh, doing what we did at Sanity Fox. 
but then also what we did at the pig and waffle as well we probably spent another two hundred thousand there doing what we need to do there um so you've backed yourself in one of the in one of the toughest times yes uh went and borrowed lots of money and uh here we are we survived um, but you've got one of the arguably one of the most consistently um recognized yeah, absolutely. pub groups in in the county for sure. Absolutely, yeah. I think in a time when hospitality got beat up and beat up incredibly badly, you you saw opportunity within that. But growing up and working in that hospitality industry, it's fair to say, you, not that you know what people want, but the venue wasn't even open when we arrived today, and it was warm, it was bright, yeah. it was light, and it was welcoming. So you I, haven't, I haven't been here since pre since you've had it. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's a very different. Um, very different to what I was expecting. But the industry is your twenty four seven three six five. I imagine, yeah, yeah. Um, if I can, where where's the 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 pub or the restaurant that you go to when you want to have half a day to yourself or you want to go for a nice nice meal? Where Northampton uh, always New Ovo with Stuart. Ah, Stuart, <laughs> it's a lovely great place. guy. Yeah, well, he's okay. bringing back. Um, I'm there, over Fridays. I'm there in a couple of weeks, the Northampton lunch. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah we yeah. always get treated like royalty. I've known yeah. Stuart for a long time. Uh, he's a great bloke. Fantastic business. Beautiful restaurant. Great yeah. food. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I, like, I like Stuart. And he's, uh, his son's doing really well, I think, with these cocktails. That's it. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I can't remember the bloody... Um, name but he does he does a cocktails which is just great yeah I always think. like to have a bottle of red when i go in there before i sit down great italian red yeah yes yeah. nice yeah. amarone or yeah you Marola. always get one off the rack not on the menu yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> i've got just the one for just you just the ben. one for you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those that i think if you use nuovo as an example nuovo knows exactly what it is it's traditional Italian great service great service every single time doesn't matter whether there's five people or a hundred people in there it's consistently as you said good uh, it's excellent yeah 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 yeah. consistently excellent to go from that and that's what keeps people coming back people I, I personally I think some people think that running a pub is easy that. You, you, that's probably you. No, 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 not me, not me. But <laughs> yeah, it's real easy. No, <laughs> yeah, no I no, use. No, I, no. I put a couple of pints, Fraser. I use the pub in my village, the the stag. We've been there having, every day with a wine. It you're in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every um, that's had so many different people go into it because they think running an establishment is easy. We only need to do this. We only need to do that. But I said this to you. I said this to you last night that. People buy from people. And if you're not a people person and you're not totally ingrained in it, mm -hmm. that shines for I don't it. know if the owner of that uh, is not a people person, is he? He's got great staff there, but... Uh, no, well, they're, they're, they've, they've reopened in... again and, and they're, those guys, they're, they're ingrained. The, the guys that have taken the wine bar that are doing really well uh, have yeah, taken yeah, that. Yeah. So they've got an understanding of the industry before you haven't had people that have done that. And I know you've got to start somewhere, but... I'm a true believer. If you love what you do, going to works. It's considerably easier because you enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, it reflects on your attitude and the way you are. And if you love what you do, which I really do love what I do <laughs> with a passion, and what everyone does here, you know, always say when we interview, we love what we do. Yeah. So if you love what you do, you're in you'll the right enjoy place. it. Yeah, you'll enjoy it. For for the real ale drinkers out there. That are listening or watching this, um, I uh, I notice you've got nine beers of the week. Well, nine beers, and they change every week. The well, not so much. Look, that's the they uh, that's a beer wall. The, so, oh, the beer wall. Sorry. So the beer wall. So they're they uh, it's more keg. So than real so, ales. So we've got three real ales here. We've got the Tim Taylor's, Tim Taylor's Dark, and the fantastic Digfield Ales. He's just up the road now, all brilliant. Um, and then we have nine beer. Beers on the wall. Lucky Saints 0.5, and then you've got Le yes. Chon Blouchet. No. Le Chouf. Le, Le Chouf Le Chouf, Blonde. So Le Chouf, which Belgium. is like an 8.8. .8. It's an 8.8. .8. We are actually Le Chouf ambassadors for the UK. Um, wow. So because we sell a lot of their products, uh, they've chosen us to be the UK. One of the, there's many, I think, I and mean, we're not just yeah. one. But we are proud and, and yeah, to so have you that title be. of the, uh, Le Chouf. Um, ambassadors for the UK because they really want their position in the market in the UK because it's not a big one I don't think I don't think a lot of people understand how these beers work you don't drink a pint that's the worst thing you can do you drink it by the half or the third yeah really, at 8.8 .8, I'll be having a couple of thirds I think <laughs> 
but it's great. It's sauce. great beer. It's just full of flavour, and uh, it, and it just goes to extend what we do. We've got quite a heavy Belgium influence here. Um, no, it's fantastic. Like I, I, I think it's great because you've it's the variety. So I'm um, the the menu. How, how often do you and your, your chefs here would would change up the menu here? Most weeks, really. Two dishes changed this week. So uh, we've just done a local game, Pativier. Uh, so it's encased in uh, puff pastry. So uh, it's um, pheasant from Lamport, it's come off the shoots in Lamport. It's uh, local fallow deer that was shot in Bowton, Bowton Estates near here. Yeah. And pigeons from Woodford. Um, so then a few other bits that aren't quite so local, but, um, yeah, yeah. you know, so we've really tried to enhance the land, put it into a dish. Yeah. and do something really local with it. And is that you? Is that you giving creativity and license to the to the chefs, or is that led by you? And is it a real? I am the 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 foodie. Yeah, we're not the foodie. So I, where do you I get look, your inspiration from? Just watching things, uh, different restaurants, or just and then just having that excitement about seeing some food and creating something different. Yeah. You know, just trying to be different. But also involving the team. It's very important to involve the team. You can't just tell them what to cook. They're yeah, not yeah. program robots. They, yeah. they need a bit of flair. They need to have their their steak in that dish. That sounds Excuse the odd. pun. Excuse <laughs> the pun. <laughs> Sorry, any vegans out there. <laughs> and, but yeah. <clears throat> so if you're, because um, one thing I've noticed here, like this is, it'd be great for a family Sunday roast, like the different areas that you've got. You could come here for a business meeting for sure over yeah. lunch. But then if you wanted to, me and you come with a couple of pints and throw a couple of I arrows. I said to Arthur, I said, it's a good job our office well. isn't next to this <laughs> pub because it, we, we probably would work out of it most days. But you have, you've, you, like I said, when you come in, you've got that warm welcome feeling. You've got the dining area. The bar is incredibly smart. It looks awesome. And then you've also got what you've got, Space Invaders. You've got the dart board. Yeah. You've got the billiard um, board. You've got everything here and you're catering to all. What, what would be your um, go-to... Me, I appreciate you, you change a couple of dishes most weeks, but what would be your go-to meal and 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 drink for that you'd recommend someone coming here for a on a Saturday lunchtime? On a Saturday lunchtime, well, uh, definitely a half of a chuf to start it off with. Um, but for the non-alcoholics, we always have a draft, low alcohol, and we've got the I think it's Belgium as well, the the one the lucky saint that we've gone on at the minute. We've had all sorts of different ones and they've sold really well. Um, and to compliment that? To compliment that, our pies. I know it sounds a bit boring, but our pies are legendary locally. We sell them in our shop. So what you, what you eat here, you can actually then go to our shop and buy and take Happy home and home. eat. Yeah. Um, so we make everything in-house uh, and our pies are to die for. And they're getting, starting to get a real sort of bit of a talk locally. We take 36 at the shop and they'll be sold in an hour. Really? People are waiting for them. There's a waiting list for them. Um, yeah, so the pies are fantastic. Have to try that. I'm a big fan of a pie winner. We'll no. Be, we'll be, yeah, it, it's Breaking just, news. <laughs> Fraser likes pies. No, a lot of the <laughs> time, too. yeah, a lot of the time on the restaurant reviews, I'd always go with a pie yeah. because I just can't think can't beat a pucker pie. Well, uh, well, all right. This is, this is in its different. time and place. Yeah, 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 yeah completely. I was going to say, yeah, if, 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm, yeah. Like Richard's going to whack me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, it's terrible, yeah. terrible. I've yeah, time, it, right time and cut place. That out, right, yeah, cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pucker pie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it sounds really boring. But you know, we're a steak and lobster restaurant predominantly. Yeah. Um, so obviously, then the next level is trying our steaks, um, dry aged from Aubrey Allen. Um, we've got a kilo T-bone at the minute, which is uh, out of this world. Um, and it's cooked over hot, hot coals. We've got a rock hot grill and a rock hot oven that we do all our cooking in. So everything's flavoured with uh, wood and coal. Um, and then the lobsters, which is quite different. Yeah. We're quite landlocked in Northamptonshire. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Again, lobster's always been a passion of mine to cook for years done it for years locally bits and pieces always sold well it's not a cheap product obviously but then for us to drive the price and to try and get it at a reasonable price on the menu it's never going to be cheap but we we store anything up to 70 kilo of live lobster on site um, and we try to get it from good ethical producers we use a company in wales called lockdown lobster 
So he's got a little boat that bobs up and down. Goes out, pulls his nets up personally, speak to him, right, Richard, I've got so many of this size, so many of that size, right, okay, pops it in the post and on they arrive. Brilliant. Um, very difficult this time of year because of the weather. Yeah, yeah. So the supply is very sort of, so we sort of had to fill that out with a bit of Canadian, you know, uh, just to, so we get the continuity of supply. But um, yeah, we've learned a lot over the last couple of years how to buy, where to buy it from and, and to keep that consistency and keep great supply of big lobsters. No one wants a little tiddly lobster, do they? <laughs> I love that lobster story because I'm like I don't I don't fish, but I love fishing programs. Any documentary on Brixham, I'm absolutely engrossed seeing that coming in, how it gets shipped around, and everything. But I've just got this vision of somebody at lockdown lobsters pulling his net up, ringing his customers, and going, "Right, I've got six in this barrel, twelve in this one." Yeah, that's yeah. Best. I've sell, got you. Sell, yeah, sell. you know, yeah. you you've bought more offers, so my, you know you've got first dibs at it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. all works that way. But yeah, yeah. <coughs> and um, Fraser was telling me about a new a new phrase. Which brings us to well, yeah, why the, we're the, here: the, the, jet jet setting. Set jetting. The 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 salt burn sort of made that trend that people are now discovering, rediscovering famous places within Northamptonshire and, and throughout the country where films, documentaries, TV shows have been made because. Oh, well, look, they want to be there they want to yeah. go and see it for themselves. Uh, the amount of influencers, um, friends that you've seen that have. Get that just Instagram moment. Just discovered Loic that we're going to Saltburn, and then oh, hang on, a mile away, bang! So, there's the Snooty Fox. So you, t how did how did that impact you? And talk us through that. When we first opened up in, it was two years ago, and suddenly we opened in the April, and then June, these film crew arrived and said, "Oh, we're filming locally. Can we come for dinner?" Well, yeah, of course we can. We'll book you in, not knowing what's going on, and suddenly. A few weeks later, there's all these famous faces sitting in the restaurant. Um, it was in Pike and Emerald, whatever her name is, and Richard E. Grant, Margot Robbie, that sort of uh, elk, so to see. So we spent the whole summer feeding them. Margot Robbie. Um, and it was uh, quite surreal, really. Just But they used to play darts with the customers, and uh, they, they were just great people. They were... Um, Easy going, easy to please, really. Um, and and fast forward now, obviously, it's, it's been released. Well, it was all forgotten the, about, wasn't it? It's yeah. our end. And then suddenly yeah. it came out just before Christmas on, I think it was Netflix, wasn't it, or whatever it came out on. And then suddenly everyone started talking about it. It's on at the cinema, we're going to see it. And then it died down a bit, Christmas, and then January, it just exploded. There was a TikTok video that the local lady did and showed everyone where everything was and then just suddenly explosion and there was a massive explosion of people and, and she said, oh, well, you need to park in the Snooty Fox car park and start there, which yeah, is Yeah, you've got plenty of car parking, haven't you? Plenty yeah. of car parking. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then they came in their droves, really. And like, so how far how far away are people coming from to come and see Loic? Three, four hours drive. Really? You see their videos like <laughs> because they tag you in. And yeah, we started on our three hour drive on a Saturday morning. And they come park here, walk up to house, come back here. They have lunch, film it all, and yeah, it's great. It's yeah. just yeah. It's the power of social media that you you the the Saltburn film went viral as a film for strange reasons, and then <laughs> oh, well, it's a real cult <laughs> thing absolutely, now, isn't yeah, it? It's absolutely. A bit of a... We just got to decide which one of us is going to dance naked to um, Sophie Ellis Baxter at the end. I don't think anyone wants to see that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't seen the film. <laughs> I don't know if I need to watch it or not. Just, weirdly, it's, it is... Don't watch it with your mum. That was the funniest <laughs> thing over Christmas. If families were together. I oh, will put Amazon Netflix on. Let's watch it. Oh, Saltburn's trending. Yeah. you imagine watching it? Oh, no way. No, thank you, sir. <laughs> but that power of social media that you've had... I mean, I can't remember the two fellas that are in them. Well, Barry is one of them, but I can't pronounce his surname. He's now one of the most instantly recognised actors in the whole of the world. So instantly recognised, you can't remember his surname. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Kieran. I Kieran, can't remember his name either. Yeah, it's, I'd, I'd embarrass myself. I got it wrong, so I'd go without it. I mean, but, Richard E. Grant was in it quite a bit, and yeah. he, he was quite entertaining. And we did the rap party for them. We did a quiz night. So to, we did a quiz night, and it, the place was just packed full of them. Oh, fantastic! Was, uh, there's loads of photos and bits on our Instagram page and bits. You go and have a look and go and see do, it. Do you know what? Everything that we've discussed, right? I, I do believe in fate. I, I, I believe good things happen to good people and when the time's right. And I think listening to your journey over these last few years and 
taking the keys in January 2020. I don't know. There's a little bit of me here that's thinking you, I, you, I you guys say, were meant to. I do sort of sit there at that. night, <clears throat> and I think maybe there is a god up there. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, because it's just been fantastic for us. It's been great for trade. It's put us on the map. It's not yeah. just about that. You know, it's about what we do and everything else. But it's just put the icing on the cake. Yeah, it really has. Yeah, I think by having that it, it, right time, right place, like Ben says, everything happens for a reason. And if you'd have a three to six month difference in taking the keys or anything like that, that opportunity could have been missed or, or, or not happened. And thousands of people have benefited from this wonderful... Uh, what what I will say, if COVID hadn't have happened, this pub would not look like this. Well, it, it's because Because we didn't open because we were closed, forced to be closed. So... I kept pulling bits off and think, well, we can't do it. Let's pull that off. Oh, so it wouldn't have looked as good as it is no, now. No, nowhere yeah. near. Uh, we were only going to give it a lick of paint and open. Uh, but instead, we've reconstructed, we, you know, we ripped all the toilets out, back to the tiles. The kitchen was always going to be done. but And then the bar, we ripped all the back of the bar off, did everything, we replaced everything um, and gave it a real good new... What do they call it? Country industrial, if there is such a word. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if there's not rum of it. So, it is. It's, it's picturesque while you're in it. It's yeah, yeah. It's exceeding my expectations. And we, we should definitely be dining here. Um, for regular listeners, we always like to end with um, our famous question, which is dinner party guests. So you've got a... Uh, you're, you're going to Nuovo. Stuart's got you the best table in Nuovo. Saturday night. Which four people are you taking with you? Past or, past or present? Past or present? Um, probably Marcus Waring, Gordon Ramsay, um, Raymond Blanc. Um, and one no. of the Rue brothers, I think, would be interesting. I'd quite like to no, sit down. No pressure on the kitchen at the Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> Stuart will be absolutely <laughs> hitting himself there. <laughs> Uh, great, yeah. great table that. Oh, yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? It would. I'd yeah. love to. I'd love the the conversation because, uh, yeah, that that's um, that's a pretty impressive table. That that is an impressive table, and I think, as I said in the the, the last time we asked somebody this question, is your table guests really tell a lot about you? That that passion that comes through the the food. Yeah. The, the 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 industry and everything but yeah i don't know i wouldn't want to say a wrong word at that table if i'm honest no i wouldn't want to serve it either <laughs> <laughs> i'd want to be look quite interesting no, oh, brilliant for, yeah, um distance. richard thank you for um letting us Pleasure. in and sharing your yeah. story we wish you the best of luck this year and thank um you. and you've i think uh, i've learned a lot about you and and, and and the business in your team. So, uh, yeah, thank you ever so much. No, both of you, thank you. It's been Thanks a pleasure. Thanks for having us, best no, of luck. Great con, thank you. Well done, Fraser. Well done, Arthur. <laughs>